Okay, in this video I will be painting some concrete floor in what will eventually be my utility room. You can see I've just finished drywalling and patching a bunch of it. I haven't put in the wall that's going to segregate the furnace and hot water tank, but I'm going to put it in about here on the floor and then that'll be its own separate room. Obviously I need to capture that drain inside the utility room and then all of this will be just utility room. So I'm not gonna paint the drywall, I'm just gonna patch it and that's done. So now I could do the floor and make it look decent. So I'm using this product called Valspar Fast Prep, which is all-in-one concrete cleaner. It is a bit corrosive, so I'm gonna toss on some gloves. I've got a scrub brush, I got a pail of very hot water and uh, some gloves. Like I said, it is corrosive, so be careful with that. I've also, swept the floor already and I have mopped it with just plain water once already and that's just to get all the dust up. So this Valspar floor cleaning product requires a bit of water on the floor and then some of the Valspar. I'm sure there's a more technical way to do this. However, I think just dumping some water on the floor and then tossing the Valspar into the mix seems to do a, a pretty good job. And you don't have to break out a measuring cup and get scientific on this. I'm using just, like I said, the regular nylon bristled scrub brush and I'm wearing some crappy shoes, some crappy shorts because obviously stuff splashes around a little bit. You don't want it to ruin your good clothes. I got no special technique for this floor cleaning. I use the back and forth, the swirly wax on, wax off motion and uh, combinations thereof. So. All you gotta do is that a whole bunch of times. If you got a really big floor, you might want to get something on a stick that you could do standing up, obviously. If you're working on a small area, like 100 square feet or so, like I've got, using this little hand brush isn't a big deal, and there's no real requirement to go buy something else, but if you got a big area, it might be worth investing in a push bristle kind of thing with a, a longer handle, and just, Real quick demo of the rest. Again, just dump some fresh water on, throw in the Valspar and use the scrub brush. Once you've scrubbed down the whole floor, I'm taking a bucket of water again and just mopping everything down once more. Push some of that Valspar water mix down the drain and mop up everything that you can. Basically, the, the cleaner the floor, the better. And you don't want anything chipping off or a little paint flex from that old paint job. So, And that'll help your paint adhere to the floor better. The roller is a rough surface roller with a 13 millimeter nap. I've got a junky paintbrush because I find this floor paint sort of gums them up quite a bit more than sort of a regular paint does. And I'm using Valspar latex porch and floor paint, which is specific for concrete or rough surfaces. And the color is light gray. So I'll just put everything in three times motion here so you don't have to watch it in real time. Painting the floor is just like painting anything. Use the brush to cut around the corners and that's so that you don't hit the wall with your roller while you're trying to roll this out. And then once you've got about 10 square feet to work with, just take your roller and overlap where you used the brush with the roller and get a good consistent coat on the floor. Obviously, if you're doing concrete, it is a lot rougher than drywall, so you might have some divots and holes and stuff that you need to fill in with some extra paint, or maybe you need to hit the uh, those cracks and spalling with the brush as well. And because it's a basement floor, there's plumbing and electrical and stuff that you might need to go around, and it's all really the same sort of process. And there's the whole floor with the first coat on it, over by the furnace. I'm not sure why it's spalling. I'm assuming the old furnace that the previous owners had might have leaked water or something on the floor. So perhaps that damaged the concrete a little bit. And then like anything, you do need to do two coats with this paint. It does do a pretty good job of covering everything up, but obviously when you have old paint on the floor and whatever other things get left on the floor over a 30 year period, you do get uh, inconsistencies in how the paint looks after it dries. So second coat is critical. I found the first coat on the concrete floor actually takes a lot of paint out of the, uh, the paint can, but the second coat isn't much different than just painting a normal wall as far as paint consumption goes. So if you're painting rougher concrete, it might take quite a bit more paint. 
And this is what everything looks like with two coats on it. I'll throw the, the drain cap back on and give you a view from both sides. And eventually I'll put a wall in because it is code to have your utility room enclosed where I am, particularly if you want to have like a family room or a bedroom in the basement eventually, you have to fully enclose that area. Overall, this job's fast, easy, and inexpensive and makes your floor look a lot better, particularly if you're like me and have three or four different colors of paint on your concrete floor. Anyway, thanks for checking out the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe.